Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Sword of Truth podcast, the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a dragon's egg full of craft brew on the side. I'm Jade. And I'm Nate. And on this episode, we are flying into chapter 68 of Stone of Tears. Heck yeah, we are. (laughs) Though you should never drink and fly. Yeah, but if the dragon's flying and it's not drinking, then you might get a pass. Like a limousine, like a chauffeur license situation. Yeah, you're just telling it where to go. (laughs) I'm in. But before we take our dragon ride, I just wanted to remind you guys that there is still time to enter in the giveaway for the Children of Dahara novel. Plenty of time. (laughs) (laughs) All you got to do is send us an email or um, hit us up on the text, literally anywhere, letting us know something that Terry Goodkind gave to you. It's still kind of a theme from Christmas, but we're rolling with it, even though it's almost February. Um, (laughs) Send one of those to us. We'll send you a message letting you know that we've received your entry. And then we will do that uh, the first episode in February will be the drawing. Yes. And we will be doing that on air so you guys will find out who wins when we do. It'll be exciting and thrilling and great. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And talking about that book, it's going to be available for you guys February 4th. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your favorite indie local bookstores, all those places you can pre-order it now. You really should. It's a really good book. We have it. We've seen it. It's amazing. Either way, you should get your hands on it. And we are definitely going to get our hands on at least one more copy. So with that, we can get into this chapter. So the chapter opens with Richard seeing the green boundary surrounding the People's Palace as he approaches riding on Scarlet. Okay, so Scarlet moves super fucking fast. I guess we've established this now. Also... And she's stealthy. Yes. Some people commented that, and they brought up the fact that Scarlet had mentioned that she could, like, land in the middle of Michael's camp without anybody knowing, and I guess the fact that she, like, snuck up on Richard those couple times, and he didn't really notice either, like... The whole group of people in the last chapter she snuck up on. Yeah, yeah. So, it's established that she's fucking stealthy and fucking fast. (laughs) Well, I think, like, dragons fly with assistance of magic, right? They would have to, because physically, a giant lizard with wings, I don't think, could fly. Maybe I'm stepping out of my... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's Yeah, it's magic. I'm I just sure. figured they'd be too heavy. Like, to support a creature that big, you need solid bones. And if you have solid bones, you're not going to fly. I think there's dragonology, and I don't know it. So, (laughs) (laughs) all right. So, another book I need to buy then. That's fine. That's fine. We'll work on it. Get back to you. Yeah. So, as they're approaching the People's Palace, Odette down there, the pinky less lady, (laughs) is shooting lightning at Richard and Scarlet, and she ends up hitting Scarlet's left wing, which is not good. I just had the thought that she's picky. She's not fancy at all. She can't stick her pinky out. Anyways, that was random. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, how terrifying to be on a dragon, which, I don't know, to me, much like a heavy-ass metal plane. It's not really supposed to be up there, but it is. And it's heavy, and if something goes wrong, it's coming down. I get plane vibes from this. (laughs) Like (laughs) Like a lot. Yeah, you got hit in the wing, and it's like, phew. (laughs) <laughs> she's got a little puff of smoke coming out of her tail yeah. or something as she's going down. Yeah, but she's like flapping furiously trying to right herself and Yeah, it's a living thing too. So yeah. that that's there's also that. The the gravity that normally sits you on her while she flies, right? They were talking about that, how she'll swoop oh, in yeah. and you just kinda get planted in your seat like the motorcycle. That's not happening right now. No. So she's going down, and he's just frantically clawing at whatever he can grab, which is probably not a lot. No. Because it's, you don't put a saddle on a dragon. (laughs) Although, a strap would probably come in handy. But he doesn't actually claw around for very long. He uses, like, his, his thigh muscles, because he ends up shooting an arrow down at Odette. Right. From where the lightning is coming from, he has Scarlet, like, use her her fire breath 
so he can see where Odette is. And then the lightning comes up again. Scarlet gets hit again. It's insanity. And he, like, he fires the arrow as soon as the target comes to him, it says. So he had his eyes on Odette for a split second. But then he can't see her because Scarlet's flying around all crazy. There's lightning. I don't know why I picture it storming, even though (laughs) it's just more dramatic that way. But like, yeah, the green boundary, I think, gives it like a eerie, a very ominous vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But then the lightning cuts off. So the arrow found its mark. Yeah. I like how Terry gives that to you from Richard's point of view, because you don't know for just a split second. Did he get it? Well, it's Richard. Of course he got it. But you don't know that for a second. Like, (gasps) maybe there could be more lightning. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, it could have struck her, but not like struck her down, you know, like just clipped her or something. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lethal blow, but either way, she's going down. Like, she's not in real control of the descent. Yeah, I guess it, it just makes it that much more impressive that, that he did. It was the lethal blow. So him and Scarlet land. He does a real quick, hey, you okay? She's okay. He heads it. The first thing Richard does inside the People's Palace is kill 15 soldiers by himself. Yeah, and it makes a comment about how he doesn't know if these guys attacked him because they knew who he was or because they didn't. Right. Well, it, yeah, at first he figures maybe they didn't know who I was. Or maybe they did. Right. Like, it's just cynical thinking. But we don't really get an answer because he killed him right away. But, like, logically, okay, any dude coming into a building swinging a sword like that, like, he just came in on a dragon, <laughs> fucking killed the sister, and he's just coming through there blazing with his fucking sword out. Yeah, he's the enemy. So the guards right? did exactly what they were supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, I, they they very well may not have been doing... Like, they, they may have been working for Dark and Roll. I don't know that. But I'm just saying, like, realistically, if you saw some dude... Like, d- did they pass out a picture of Richard? I don't think they did. So... <laughs> I think the point is that we didn't hear any words... Yeah. We have no idea if they're like, hey, who are you? And he's like, fuck you, I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> or if they just came at him swinging. Because if they did that, yeah, they're dead. Like, there's doesn't matter if they made a mistake at that point. They intended to kill him. He can't let that happen. And now we know that Richard is like a level 15, at least, sword fighter. Yeah, I'm just saying, I think for both sides, um, it probably would have seemed aggressive. Like, he he was coming running in there pretty aggressively, so I feel like it would have seemed like he was a threat to yeah. the other side. Well, yeah, a dude like Richard running up on you would definitely put you on your guard. Yeah, and then... You don't fuck around with a giant guy like that with a magic <laughs> sword. Like, no. Right, and then vice versa, he would see them being like, oh, fuck, and be like, all right, now I'm gonna kill you, so... <laughs> <laughs> but... After he kills the 15 soldiers, six more Sith. Also a problem. Like, that's never good, right? If you see a group of six? No, no, no. And they all are running towards him with her ajeels out. And he, he knows he can't use the sword on them, so he draws his knife instead. Because the last time he saw any of the Mord Sith was not a good time. And he told everybody that he wanted all their shit burned. And it was like... They're done. He did not want any of the Mord Sith being a thing anymore. So he automatically assumes this is a bad time. Yeah, well, that was his last command. He's supposed to be listening to him. If he's the Lord Rawl, that's their job. But now he sees them. They're running at him, and he's assuming they're going to attack him. The last time he attacked a Mord Sith with his sword, a.k.a. Denna, yeah. He was captured by her, so he he knows that that's not an option, and he draws his knife, which is a obvious disadvantage, <laughs> yeah. but it's the only thing you can do, and he was totally prepared to do it. But the leader, Kara, Kara! here she is, yeah. officially, hey, uh, soft spoiler alert, Kara's a big player. Yeah. So. So hi. So hi, Kara. <laughs> You have blue eyes, and hello. You're a character in a thing. We like Kara. Anyways, she says that we are here to help the Lord Rawl, but Richard doesn't believe her, because obvious. (laughs) She's a Mord Sith. 
they obviously didn't listen to him when he was here the last time. They didn't, like, burn the leather, get rid of the Ajeels, none of that. Yeah, he's like, basically, the fact that you exist means that you don't follow me because I said you don't. So Specifically said, (laughs) not this. But she explains that they still have them because, hey, you freed us. We're not slaves anymore, so we can do what we want, right? And what we want to do is protect you, Elbow and the only jab. way we know how is with the Ajeels. Right? So, like... We can do what we want. Uh, right, Richard? Right? Because <laughs> you said last time, remember? Yeah. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right, so leave me alone. That's my order. She's like, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> We're we're choosing to keep you safe, so it doesn't really matter if we have to break your orders, even though your orders are the only orders we will listen to. If you give us an order that prevents us from keeping you safe, all bets are off, because we're here to keep you safe. Right. Which, right away, adds a dynamic. You know the last Dark and Raw would never have allowed that. No. They they got pretty, <laughs> they were like, hell yeah, we have rights. <laughs> they got comfortable real fast. But that's good. Like, that's a good thing that they're in that mindset instead of the, the crazy mindset that we knew they were in in the first book. Richard has taken that whole group of women to a, a whole nother level. Yeah, a whole different level of devotion than yeah. they were at before. Because and, and then she proves her story by whispering in Richard's ear, it's the toasted toad's truth, while he's, like, holding his knife to her throat. <laughs> Because, again, does not trust her. Yeah, and and she does not understand where this is coming from. She just knows that it's a it's a secret code that General Trimac heard from Zed. Right. Trimac said to, like, not tell anybody else the code. This is, like, Richard's special thing. He'll get it. Right, and it, and he does. It It is enough. <laughs> it is effective enough to get him to be like, okay... You got Zed to say the thing that I... Okay, all right. If Zed blessed <laughs> it, then I will begrudgingly be okay with it. But, yeah, again, he just wants them to get the fuck out of the way. But they're like, no, you're going the wrong way. If you go this way, you're about to have a rough time. You have to go the way <laughs> that we tell you we know where we're going. So, eventually, he follows them towards the Garden of Life, stepping over bodies as they, like, clear the way. That reminds me so much of South Park, where he's like, if you pizza when you're gonna you're supposed to French fry, you're going to have a bad time, okay? <laughs> he's talking about, uh, I think they're skiing. I didn't watch a lot you of You don't South know Park. what I'm talking about? No. Oh, no! <laughs> I was all alone on that one. <laughs> I was like, damn it, this is funny. Why isn't she? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, That makes no. sense. <laughs> well, it, to be fair, just hearing what I just said, probably isn't funny at all but if you were to watch that episode of south park you would laugh instantly i'm sure other people probably did i'm probably in the minority on on not knowing what you're talking about but that's that's okay okay. Ah! Ah! (laughs) so the mord sith end up leading him towards the garden of life and they meet up with the leader general trimac and the first file is the ring of steel around the Lord Rawl. So this is his number one, number one dude. Right. Top soldier. (laughs) He knows that Richard is going into the Garden of Life to do some magical sorcery shit that he doesn't understand. And it's his job to be the steel against steel. So he's like, hey, we are going to keep this area clear while you go in there and do your thing. Yeah. The reason this is important is because as all of this is going on, there are, like, troops of the Daharans who have broken away from Richard's rule, essentially, and they're still either following Dark and Rawl, or they're just, like, they're agents of the Keeper. Yeah, I think that they're pledged to Dark and Rawl. Like, they were his men, and now he's back. So, so they're just yeah. following him. Yeah, I mean, he's a ghost, but he's here, so... <sighs> It's strange. We lose a lot of time at the People's Palace that we don't know what happened. Because the last time we left there, Zed was there, right? He was, like, being 